Hi, my name's Tim Melling and I work for Nature Trek and I'm here to talk about uh, a trip that we run to Costa Rica. Uh, we call this the Quetzals and Cloud Forest Tour. Um, so, Costa Rica is uh, a place, it means rich coast because the people who arrived there thought that it was going to be full of gold and uh, jewels and things like that that needed mining. But uh, uh, unfortunately for them, the only riches that Costa Rica has is its natural riches, and it certainly has those. It's a very, very small country, about twice the size of Wales, uh, but the height of it from sea level to the highest point is about three times the height of Ben Nevis. And that altitude makes an awful lot of difference in terms of uh, niches for the, the various wildlife to occur at. And uh, some uh, of these species, like this tiny volcano hummingbird, which is only millimeters bigger than the smallest bird on the planet, the bee hummingbird. And that only occurs on a handful of tiny volcano tops. And these populations are so isolated that even they have different plumages and patterns but uh, they're still considered to be the same species and uh, and then you can just move a few yards go down the hill a little bit and you'll find that all the birds are different because you're in a different altitude band right the way down to the bottom to the sea level where you get things like this big turkey sized bird called the great curacao that makes a wonderful booming noise like a bitten Anyway, I'm going to start off at a place called Corcovado, which is in the uh, uh, southwestern side on the Pacific side of uh, uh, Costa Rica. And this is one of the best places in Costa Rica to actually see mammals. Um, at the coast, there are uh, uh, seabird colonies, magnificent frigate birds. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's a red uh, footed booby in there as well. But it's, uh, this is a great place for monkeys. There are a hell of monkeys here. And, um, you know, they wake you up in the mornings with their uh, given light chantings, uh, very, very noise, the hell, hell uh, monkeys. And there's some really high quality rainforest. I always find rainforest very difficult to photograph, but uh, you need to catch because it's often very dark and uh, and unphotogenic when you get in amongst it. But here's a few la uh, shafts of sunlight uh, getting through. But this is in Costa Rica. This is what the rainforest actually looks like there. Um, uh, you can get uh, coates here. Uh, this is a Central American coate. We used to call these coate mundis when I was young, but um, you often get these around the hotels because, again, they're looking for handouts and food and things like that. But there are much, much uh, rarer, more elusive mammals like the northern tamandua. Uh, this is like a, a, a tree anteater that uh, it climbs trees and eats ants and termites up there, but it looks like it's wearing a little black waistcoat and uh, uh, on, on top of a sort of a sheep's in jacket in brilliant animals there. Uh, this is Jeffrey's spider monkey. Um, uh, th th a lot of these neotropical monkeys have uh, prehensile tails. They use it like a, uh, a another um, uh, limb to sort of get, uh, cling on to and they can sort of uh, support the whole body weight with, uh, uh, with just their tail. Uh, this is a squirrel monkey, um, <laughs> a little Dracula type hair, uh, hair pack, uh, uh, style there. And uh, uh, this is the Central American tapir as well. They're often very elusive, but sometimes they come out on the beaches and sometimes like this, you can find them, but uh, Corcovado is the place to see them if you're going to see them. Uh, I remember once I was in a, um, I found this little uh, um, jungle pool in the middle of the rainforest and there, uh, just sitting there above the pool, was one of the most beautiful birds I've ever seen. It's the highly elusive and highly sought after Agami heron and uh, just look at that. It, it's, uh, it, it occurs in the rainforest by little pools rather than in the big wetlands so it's not an easy, you don't see it with all the other wetland birds and uh, I, I, it, it, was, it was just sitting there motionless and I had to sort of move around the pool to try and get different angles of it and look at how long that bill is as well with that electric blue plumage and I was just watching it and I was just taking a photograph and then all of a sudden this spectacled caiman just leapt straight out of the water about five feet out of the water its jaw snapped shut and there was a couple of feathers and then this agami heron disappeared off into the rainforest never to be seen again and this uh, frustrated uh, spectacled caiman sat there smiling in the pool below it, but it didn't get its dinner that day. <laughs> Uh, the butterflies there are amazing as well. This is something called the blushing phantom. It doesn't have scales on its wings like a normal butterfly. It has all the beauty and elegance, even with the colours, with eye spots and pink, but it doesn't have scales on the wing. It has translucent wings like a fly. 
So, uh, and this is the Emperor Morpho, Morpho Pelliades, with all these little eye spots on its wings, which are there to deflect the attacks of predators like lizards and birds away from the body. But when you see these things open up, they've got iridescent blue wings. It shines like blue silver paper. And um, they have a really, they're as big as a dinner plate, but they fly really, really slowly. They're the really sort of weak, floppy flights, and you see the iridescence of the blue. It really is one of the most amazing butterflies that I've, I've ever seen uh, there. Uh, this is a, a little toucan relative called a flame-billed arasari, um, uh, which uh, we, get, we get in the, uh, the rainforest there, and scarlet macaws as well. The population of these has been decimated by the pet trade, but they're still in reasonable numbers there, and they still don't seem to have much fear of humans. Here's a couple of them flying over there, and there's one helping itself to some uh, 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 dates on a palm tree as well. But these are all truly wild birds, even though that looks like it was taken in a, uh, a zoo. Um, we sometimes go at night, out at night into the rainforest with torches looking for the special rainforest wildlife. And here, this is an emerald glass frog. They're called glass frogs because they've got translucent uh, bodies. And if you shine a torch through the body, you can see all the internal organs as well. Fantastic animals. And this is like one of the iconic rainforest uh, uh, poster species. This is the red eyed tree frog. But I photographed this one uh, on, on the Costa Rica trip here. And this is a striped basilisk. Uh, this was by one of the lodges that we were staying at uh, in, in Costa Rica and uh, it's also known as the Jesus Christ lizard because this is the one that if it gets disturbed it can run over the surface of the water supposedly like Jesus walked on the surface of Galilee as well that's why it's called the Jesus Christ lizard. So uh, then we uh, uh, travel high into the, uh, uh, the, the forest, uh, up to the very high altitude, as I said, about three times the height of uh, Ben Nevis. And here it's so high, you can even see ra uh, rainbows um, with rainforest in the background. It's uh, uh, the, the, the land is so high there. Uh, here, swallowtail kites glide over the tops of the rainforest. and. Um, uh, uh, and other uh, lodges that we stay at, they, they put fruit out on the bird tables because most of the rainforest birds are fruit eating. These are silver-throated tanagers uh, uh, feeding on a papaya, I think it is. And this is the golden hooded tanager with their lovely royal blue, shining royal blue in its plumage. But these are garden birds there as well. Uh, this is blue-crowned mop mop. This has been divided into several species, but the one that we get in Costa Rica is the Lessons blue-crowned mop mop. But look at that iridescence. And this is feeding on a banana on the bird table. Chestable, chestnut mandible toucan as well, uh, one of the toucans that comes and visits the bird tables there. And sometimes there are birds that uh, they look, might look a little bit dull, but this one would really set the pulses racing if it turned up in Britain, as it has done. This is a Tennessee warbler. Uh, uh, you get a lot of the American warblers, like chestnut sided warbler down there as well, and American red star. And this is the summer tanager, another common um, uh, American bird that you find in uh, uh, Costa Rica in the winter. And then the cloud forest canopy looks a little bit like this and we travel to uh, the cloud forest for uh, uh, the special birds of, of, of the high altitude here. Uh, birds like the long-tailed silky flycatcher. It was once thought that these were related to wax wings because of uh, uh, they looked a little bit similar with a crest and a short beak but uh, when they've done the DNA tests on them they're uh, uh, quite quite uh, uh, well separated. And uh, this is the uh, uh, the spangle cheeked tanager. Many of the uh, 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 birds that you see are in the tanager family, which is uh, only found in the New World. There are no tanagers whatsoever in Africa or Asia or Europe. Uh, yeah, golden spangled tanager. And uh, uh, this is the, it's either called the sooty thrush or sooty robin. Don't forget that the robin in America is the American robin, which is a kind of thrush. So that's why they call this one sooty robin. It looks a little bit like a blackbird. And then you look and you think, well, it's not quite right. Its eyes are the wrong color and its legs are a bit too pale, but uh, it occupies the same niche as blackbird up there. It sort of comes into gardens on the rainforest edge. And the hummingbirds as well. Some of the lodges we stay at have got these things in abundance. This is the white-throated mountain gem. And um, I found a hummingbird nest one year. This was the nest of a scintillant hummingbird. And those tiny little uh, uh, eggs in there, they were as big as Tic Tac mints. In fact, they look like Tic Tac mints uh, in there. A really fabulous thing. And because there's lots of flowers around the lodges where we stay, uh, they attract a lot of the hummingbirds. And so you get lots of photo opportunities to take pictures like this. This is a green violet here. It was feeding right outside my bedroom window. 
know. But there's one bird that the hummingbirds really don't like, and this is a slaty flower piercer, because what it does is it pierces through the, uh, the base of the flower and it pinches all the nectar, which basically empties the flower and doesn't leave it for the hummingbirds to take in the normal way. But the flowers need the hummingbirds because they act like big giant bumblebees because they get a little bit of pollen on their foreheads. And then when they visit another flower, they, they transfer the pollen and fertilize the flowers here. Uh, there are acorn woodpeckers around this cloud forest here. They live in colonies and all the males are related and all the females are related but, uh, to themselves, but not, not, not between the sexes. So it's a bit like seven brides for seven brothers. And they actively defend a, uh, a tree that they uh, use as a store tree where they, they drill the holes and store the acorns in there. Uh, so this is also the one that apparently uh, uh, in, inspired Woody Woodpecker, uh, uh, particularly the voice of it, the laughing voice of it. So uh, also in the crowd, uh, cloud forest is this, this very very small toucan relative that's known as the emer emerald toucanet. This is found in little pockets of high altitude rainforest throughout Central America and Northern South America but each population is slightly different and they've decided that this one's a new species. So this is the blue-throated toucanet that we get in Costa Rica. So uh, uh, there are many, many different trogons. Uh, I, I, again, this is a, a tropical bird that occurs around the, uh, the, the globe, but um, uh, th there's many species that occur in Central and South America. This one just happens to be the collared trogon, but they all have the same basic pattern. But the bird that we're, everybody really, really wants to see is, uh, is the, the trogon relative, which is the respendent quetzal. Um, this, these birds, they feed on fruit and they're quite territorial. They have about a 10 hectare territory that they defend so they're only found at low uh, density uh, the body is is about from from the the, uh, the top of the head to the tip of the normal tail is about 15 inches but the uh, the really elongated feathers can add uh, uh, up to uh, 24 to 30 inches uh, uh, um, uh, there so the, the actual tail uh, is longer than the bird from head to, to the, uh, the the normal tail there they um, they nest in trees and the male does a lot of the incubation and he goes in and he twists his body around so just the uh, uh, the, the, the super long tail feathers are uh, uh, protruding out and um, uh, th th this is a highly popular bird it's the one that lots of people want to go to Costa Rica to see so it's really really popular but here's another one the uh, resplendent quetzal it's uh, look at that great long tail the uh, uh, they're actually not tail feathers those as well they're upper tail covered so they're normally the uh, the, the the rump feathers here and one final uh, one there and it's traditional to end on a sunset so here's another sunset thank you very much <laughs>